Yes, we had a, a question from Glenn in uh, Coventry over a uh, hair algae in his tank. And um, so, uh, yeah, hair algae can be quite a nuisance. It's quite common in new tanks when they're going through the algae cycle at the start, but they can make a recurrence later on. Now, hair algae is quite different to a lot of other algae. Most other algae feed primarily on, on phosphate or nutrients within the water column. Um, whereas hair algae tends to um, feed on particles that it traps within the hairs. So, what you need to do is you need to uh, restrict, the fir first thing you need to do is restrict the amount of particles going to the hair algae. So, ensure you've got plenty of cleanup crews, you've got plenty of nacerous snails, things like arasters and scooters are good because they'll go around on the bottom and they'll clear up little bits of food, but then don't drift around and get caught in the fronds of the hair algae. Also, avoid very messy foods. Flake has loads of small powdery bits which drift around and get trapped in the hair, so avoid flake. Uh, mussel is another food with lots of messy bits. Some low quality coral foods will settle out on the sand if you let them, they're not buoyant. Um, to check this, just put a little bit of coral food in the tank. If it floats around for ages, it's all good. If it settles on the sand quite quickly, then you know that's going to be a problem. So first of all, target the particles that you're putting into the tank. So cut down on flake, pellet, mussel, anything like that with lots of small particles which are going to make a mess. That's, your, that's the first thing you need to do. Secondly, you need to get the small particles that are in the water out of the water. So, you know, if you're using like a filter sock or something, that's only going to trap down to like 100 microns or 250 microns. Whereas if you use a good quality filter floss, that's going to trap down to just a few microns. Far better than a filter sock is. You can line your filters up with a little bit of floss, get all those fine particles out of the water. You can also use a water clarifier, UV or rosan, to help improve that further as well. Get those particles out of the water. So now you've restricted the food supply to the uh, hair algae. Next thing you need to do is to deal with the hair algae that's already there. So pull out as much as you can, and then after that, apply grazing pressure. And you can do that with inverts like Halloween hermit crabs, Mithrax crabs, the Sally Lightfoot crabs do an excellent job of eating hair algae or grazing fish. In a very big tank, your best bet is a rabbit fish or fox face, which will mow through it in absolutely no time. In a smaller tank, sort of 200 to 500 litre size, you can be looking at bristle tooth tanks, which will do a cracking job. Once you get below 200 litres, it gets a little bit trickier. Anything 100 to 200 litres of starry blennies are probably your best bet. And you can add a couple of those if they're the same kind of size and they go in on the same day together. That will help quite a lot. In smaller tanks, you are mostly reliant on uh, crabs such as Halloween hermits, Sally Lightfoots, and Mithrax crabs, which will mow through it. Try and remove as much of it as you can to save them the work and break through it. Get rid of those fine pipes, cut back on the food, and in no time at all, you'll have a hair algae free aquarium.